What rank is this? I think Mameda is gold? No, wait, so you were iron free some time ago. You said you ranked up, right? If I remember correctly. You're bronze free. Okay, okay. Alright, so it's a bronze free gameplay, my friends. We're gonna try to teach everyone as much as possible. Alright? We're gonna try to teach everyone as much as possible. First round, we're going five men A. We're peaking before uh, anything happens. So, <laughs> that's very unfortunate. Um... We should have waited for that stun to happen to actually peek off it. Okay, but everyone is going forward. You didn't buy... Wait, wait, wait. You didn't buy... You saved 400 cash. So that's... First first thing here first. F fucking drilling! Sorry, guys. Um, you saved 400 cash for no reason in my eyes. Sage has a very insane buy on pistol round because wall is just so insanely powerful. But also you can become a little bit of bit of a tank, which is very important, specifically when you go for A example, because you're gonna encounter a chamber. Chamber would have to either headshot you to kill you, or he would have to sacrifice three bullets to the chest. Because you have armor. Otherwise, it's only two bullets. Many people in pistol rounds go for body for body chests when they don't hit the first bullet, which gives you a higher chance of winning gunfights. And also remember, this is still not the new patch. So when you have armor and you win a gunfight, you most likely will be able to heal yourself, which might not be the case if you just die. Right? So as a sage, I hate to say this, but there's only one good buy for every map you play sage on, and that's wall and armor. Okay? When you play solo queue. So, I don't hate this wall, right? But it doesn't achieve much. Right? It doesn't achieve much. The thing is that you can also do the wall like here, right? Which will connect it to this pillar. So it will make certain that people will not be able to push you now on the side. They will be funneled in this direction, and that's fine. But you need to communicate now to hold it. Because you got the, the, the site for free, right? I like this wall if you would be playing crossfire. Like, one player here, the other player just like you here, and you wait for players to peek into you. You funnel them into this one position when they are just basically dead, right? But if you're taking sight, walling like this might be better, right? My god. That, that two motherfuckers drilling right now. I'm not making this shit up. Alright, since I'm not a I'm not a sage main. I, you don't have to even rotate it. Look. You can just do this. I actually know. Fuck it. You can just do this, right? Wait, we need to destroy it. Wait, judge? Oh no, epic pen. Okay. Let let us check how to do an effective wall here. This should be effective. Yeah. You don't have to rotate anything, right? You don't have to, like, scramble for shit. And will you... Al and w it should allow you... Or, like... I mean, I hate rotating, like... W what is the other way of rotating? You have to click right and, like, do this, right? This is, like, very cute. You can sometimes do this... When you're like, if you're like a sage main, you for sure will use this. I'm not a sage main, so I'm not using it. But if you're a sage main and you do this, that's impressive. You know? For me. If you do this correctly every single time. And you can practice that. If you're trying to like main sage, I would probably enjoy learning stuff like this. Right? We go here. We're going in. I'm going to rotate it. Right? Roop. Here we go. And now you, you can go sight. You funnel a little bit here, so it might not be the best, but it saves you drop, saves you CT, and you can right swing right side, like wide. Remember, if you go through a pinch like this, you wide swing. First player goes wide swing, creates space for the rest one to trickle in. All right? That is very important. These walls are better than the one across towards the drop that people like to use. 
than the ones across towards the drop that yeah i think this one is much better if you attack because it gives you space to just go onto site so when you do this shit it's much easier going in like either this if you don't want to rotate right or this if you're a little bit more mechanically and and like let's say better right but you need to ensure that you that it's connected and it doesn't leave gaps like this right Oh my god, yo. Here, take 10 minutes. Account created 13 minutes ago, and he's following for 12 minutes. I wonder why did you come here? You got timed out on a di different account, and now you're trying to sound like, you know... Like a nice person? That you're talking about something about that you know? Unlucky. Take flight. So funny. God sent! Yo, thank you so much for the 52 months. Welcome back, brother. Now we have, by the way, the, the, um, um, what is it called? The Founders Badge. Congrats. So yeah, if you go on A, remember to, to either do this, right? Rotate the wall like this and do it here, right? Or you go for this wall and do it like this. The point is typically you want to avoid um giving additional additional um angles for your opponents to peek through without certainty right all right now see this right now there's only one player that is holding you spy hold uh, planting the spike right and the the thing is that this smoke allows someone to stand in the smoke and just shoot you without ventilation. Like, this is really risky. I would never, never encourage this. This is like really, really fucking risky and unnecessary. And also, the plant is really bad. Like, the plant is really bad because it's completely out in the open. If you have an opportunity, in my eyes, you should always try to plant over here in this spot. Because what you try to do, this again, remember guys, this is this is uh, this, those are advice that I would give to beginners players as well. But maybe you're gonna learn something if you're just kind and you wish to the game. If you're experienced, you're gonna know this, right? When you're planting a spike, right? When you're planting a spike, you want it to be planted exactly in the corner. So. When you're planting out, you want to look into the corner at the end so it drops here. Because when it drops in the in that spot, right, it's super easy to kill players. Because now, they're going to have to stand in this spot or in this spot. So when you're shooting through a smoke, you only have to just shoot basically one position, right? Because someone pings you the spike, and the only thing that you have to shoot is here and here. And you have guaranteed kills. Essentially. Right? But if you plant out in this spot, then the players can be here. And you will have to spam a lot of a lot of different angles. You know? So this spot is better for you. It's safer. You know, you can be shot through the smoke. And it's also better for post plant. What the fuck? Hold on a sec, what are you doing? <laughs> Alright. You need to work on your cross placement, right? When you're peeking... I like the white swing. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> I <obeyed> him so... <laughs> oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. But you definitely need to work on your, uh, on your cross placement. It's a little bit too, lo too low, right? You need to have it a little bit higher up. But I really, really like the fact that you didn't spam your bullets mindlessly. Which is very good. Right? Shield mode is... You can 
pop in a shield mode to enable like anti-spam uh, stuff in chat essentially. I really like the white swing. It's really good. So wait, wait. 3.9. So <laughs> you say 400 cash, by the way, right? So that's the reason why you have 3.9. So you could go for a phantom huge shields and be like, whatever, right? Like you could go for that. Phantom full shields, that's one option, but you should never have those 400 credits, you should be at 3.5k right now, because you should have spent it for the shields in the previous round, so let's assume you don't have 3.9, right, because in my eyes that was a mistake. Now in this round, I don't feel like you should be buying slow orbs, but a barrier orb is always needed. So you go heavy shields, barrier orb, and your favorite gun for round 2, so either Spectre, Stinger... Um, bulldog, Marshall, whatever the cash you have for, right? And you feel comfortable with, right? No so you went for small shields and and wall. So small shields have the problem of being one-tapped over 30 meters with a sheriff. And it's again, it's the same. It's the same thing that we talked about in pistol round. I feel like on this patch, right before they nerf heal from Sage, it's very important to have the 50 additional health because on rounds here, you're essentially like a mini Reyna, right? You want to make sure that you can take a gunfight, win it with enough health to heal yourself, because if you're gonna get one tap by a sheriff, that always feels bad. Spending that 600 additional credit here for the full shield is very important. Look, your entire team plays sl small shields. That is insanely risky. Insanely risky, I would say. You, you, you can die to random classic spams as well because it changes a lot of the damage. You die to a headshot, body shot from a, from a ghost, which is also a huge change. You hear one on the rope, okay. You go after after the stun, which is nice. You're right. Reyna uh, pushes alone, not Gucci, but it goes back, okay. You go for the same wall as the pistol round. And you plant... I mean, this this is a better, definitely a better spot to plant than the one that you use in, in, in turn one. I need to get my epic pen upgrade back because I I spent 20 euros to buy epic pen and I'm not logged in here. Hello? Can I hide this? Hunting for frags. Everyone's hungry. Voter using this elo is kind of pointless in my opinion. Why would you say that? Please argument. Uh, make make an argument. Why is it pointless? I would like to know. Wait, wait. Did I see correctly? You didn't take damage right now. Look, you didn't take damage. You have twenty five shields. To buy heavy shields, you are spending one k. Right. That you're spending 1k, so it's very inefficient for you because you paid 400 for your shields in the last round. Now you're paying 400 essentially for having the same shield and you overbuy it we can, we, with a full shield, which is economically really bad for you because you're wasting essentially 1.4k. Right? So you, you will be able to build up economy faster because of that. I don't think a bronze free player is capable of learning so much in one review. They should practice aim in basic game sense. Fuck off. Holy shit. How are... And that is an elitist view. That is an elitist view. Viewing someone else that is inferior to you, right? Because you think they cannot learn. You want to, get, you want to be open to people. You want to be... If you know something well, if you if you are capable of teaching other people things that you know well, you should be doing that. Doesn't matter if they are able to learn it efficiently or not. 
saying that it's pointless, you're just being a piece of shit now towards the people that are new to the game or better at the game and want to learn. So this is fucking elitist as fuck. Maybe eight hours was too much. I'm going to give you 10 minutes. Hopefully you're going to fucking rethink what you just said. Mermaid right now is learning a shit ton. Even this buying economy is insanely important. Holy fuck. That's his opinion. This is chill. Yeah, here, chill ten, for 10 minutes as well. Holy fuck. So now buying this full shield is definitely an overcommitment, right? In general, I follow rules like this. If I have over 20 armor, but I don't have too much money, like over 4k, I'm not gonna rebuy armor on a bonus round. Right? Yo, Martin, thank you, thank you so much for the six months. Welcome back, brother. Or sister. So I want to build up economy as much as possible. Here, you have 25 armor, which is what you bought last round. It's still good for this round. Unfortunately, someone is drilling in the building and I can't do shit about that. Let's have some fun. Nah, bro, you shouldn't pay for a coach in the gym because you just need to get stronger. Technique and knowledge are not important. Very good. Sarcasm is detected. Alright, so you guys are going five together. By the way, I, I didn't realize, but I think your killjoy is never setting up anything for, for flank. And she's going in first. Before, again, this is something that we have seen. This is the third round in a row. When someone on your team, it's a five stack, right? So you can teach them that. Someone in your team is peeking before that breach uses either his stun or a flash. And Kildred dying first is insanely bad for controlling the map because she should be, she should be like controlling your flanks. Standard wall, it's pretty okay. Yeah. <laughs> so now this smoke is like exclamation mark smokes, right? Exclamation mark smokes. This smoke from our omen here helps the opponents to do exactly this. Right? That smoke allows someone to peek out completely out of the blue. We have no control whatsoever. If you're... The same applies to the wall. Like... When we are going in... Onto B side, right? Send your, send your smoker the video about smokes and so on. What you want to do is put the smoke over here when it ends in this spot. So people cannot just go out like here and be like, oh, ha, 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 they're planting. Okay, let me peek and kill the planter. Ha, ha, surprise. Just put the smoke over here so it ends on this line. So people are going into the smoke here and they would have to step out of the smoke out in the open and be most likely killed. Right? <sighs> Not gonna lie, but I think your neighbors drilling too often. It's a new building. There's shit ton of fucking uh, neighbors. Uh, so unfortunately, statistically speaking, many of them will be. Wait, bye. You had zero, right? You were thinking about buying this, but you okay. Oh, it's good. This is like a full buy for you guys. Forever. 
Okay. You, you, again, you have no no flank control. So basically, do the pistol strat. Well, I mean, it's nice to see that you guys are playing together as a, as a team. Your omen is a little bit unaware. So here, there are two options. Right? You see your omen fighting. Right here. Look. Look. Omen fighting, right? You should not swap to the to the wall. You should be here with a gun and re-peek as soon as possible. Your omen should... Look, when he starts fighting, you are re-peeking and we guys are trying to find uh, to fight him together. You should not... Like, he has almost no chance of fighting... Like, of, of hiding back. Like, he is so out in the open. So... You swapping to the slow is like griefing yourself and the omen. Your reaction should be here when he's like fighting this player here. You should just re-peek and try to kill that chamber with the omen, right? You hear one in double dose, that's the neon. You're holding with the killer. Killer goes for a lone peek. That's another problem. When you see... Kildra go for, for a white peak like this, you should probably just cut the corner and go behind her. Let's see what you do. You holding... Oh, that's that's a very, very good teachable moment. You... What the fuck? How did I... Wait. Fuck me, that drilling, man. Alright, let's watch it again. This is a very good teachable moment, because... Right here, the moment you go to the right side, this drilling is fucking terrible. Wait, I'll, I'll, I'll change my settings because this is unreal. Let's go to like 36, I guess. Maybe we'll pick it, pick it up less, hopefully. But I have to speak up a lot. All right. So, um, the reposition from our sage here is the complete opposite of what you should do. Going right side limits your point of view, limits the angle. Yo, Killjoy is wide swinging to have contact of the player from behind the wall, but the player behind Killjoy is going towards cover, so he's essentially leaving the Killjoy alone. What should be happening instead is our Sage player, the moment she sees the Killjoy going out, you should be doing the same stuff, going behind her, to make sure you can, you, you can trade. To make sure you're able to go there with that player and make sure you can trade that player. It's very important. Because right now, see, like, I think this is a mindset. I think, that, I actually, I know what this is. You can tell me if I'm right or wrong, Mameda, but I'm almost certain because now I see it's the second time. First with the Omen and now with the Killjoy. Your mindset is... I'm not gonna peek because my teammate needs a heal after he wins the gunfight. So you're feeling like, like your job is to heal the player that potentially can lose the gunfight anyway and be dead instead of helping them fight in the first place. Right? In this very specific situation as well, think about it this way. Killjoy fights... You trade her immediately because you went behind her. Killjoy dies. The player wins the gunfight here, but he's low on HP or full of recoil. So you just kill this player. Easy kill. You get the res. You can res Killjoy. And that gives you a higher odds of winning the round than doing this because this player now is in a 1v1 that he can easily lose. And you are taking a 1v1 that you can easily lose. Because there's no downside of this player, like, having to recoil the reset or being, like, you know, maybe lower HP, he will hide and so on. So swinging here to be, like, next to your player is much more important. You know? Don't think, don't think about utility here. What is more important is you having your teammates back and just killing the opponents. It doesn't matter what role are you playing here. What matters is that you have a gun and you should be using it. Right? In your mind, you should change your mindset. Don't heal. Like, like the heal doesn't matter unless you're after the gunfights already. See this? This right here? This is good movement. 
your teammate is on your left, right? Which means that if someone peeks through the door, for example here, this person is most likely dead first, but then you can swing after him dying and just kill the player here. This is good. But before that, you were essentially trying to help him, but what literally happened is you baited the killjoy. This is a very good moment to learn, like, the basic... Th this is, like, fundamentals. This is something that many people in Immortal 3 don't understand, by the way. I think I do this a lot to my mates. Yeah, that, and that's in... And that's not your fault, because this is your first FPS. This is something that you need to learn, and if someone that is more experienced at the game will not explain it to you, then you will be sitting in this mindset of, this is a MOBA. Because in a MOBA, when you're playing a support role, that probably is the play. Look, you're supporting with spells, you're, you're like, you know, like your AD carry. But in this, in this case, in this game, this is not true. Like, what you are at the fundamental level, you are all the same. Thank you. Wouldn't baiting to trade and get a res a good option too? I mean, I explained that as well. It doesn't matter like if there's a res, potential res or not. You should still fight the normal way. And if you win the gunfight, you get a res anyway. And this is and this is why newer players, players at very low ranks, would benefit from someone who is more knowledgeable about the game explaining them to, to them what is the game is about and how to avoid doing mistakes that they will probably repeat over and over again. That's why being elitist and a gatekeeper, like we had in chat is insanely bad mindset that also makes the newer players not like the fucking community. Be better, please. Be welcoming. Teach other players that are worse than you. Not with an angle of, I'm better than you, you should be just playing fucking Kovax or aim labs and just shoot fucking heads. Help them with something that they will most likely will never be able to figure it out themselves because they lack either the experience of playing games for years, or they just don't have the mindset to think about tactical stuff like this. Right here, see, like, this is also very... Uh, this, is, uh, this is a moment where you are detached a little bit from your team. Look, look at the minimap. Your players are going right side, but you are going left side with the spike, right? When someone peeks from long here, you are in a 1v1 fight, even though you have three players. Because those people will never see this player here. This is a very common spot also for the chamber to peek. So if the chamber peeks here, right, or a jet, you will be never able to get a trade-off because he instantly TPs out or dashes out, which might be possible if you guys all go together. So here, you either communicate that all of you go right side or all of you go left side. And if your opponents are playing flashes, well, then one player can still be playing anti-flash in this position or in this position here behind you guys. Do you not think the best way to climb out of bronze is to improve core mechanics like aim and movement? How? Like, sure, but that's just exclamation mark duels practice that shit. How do you fix other problems? Someone, look, someone sends in, someone sends in a VOD review, pays for that, doesn't matter what rank he is, that means that that person is eager to learn and wants to learn something. Because he knows he needs help. Being dismissive of people like that is just being an asshole. See, the, exactly what I explained happened. Now no one is able to help you and you expose yourself to an operator player. So, by the way, you're also a sage that is very close to res. 
So it's like, it's a little bit iffy for you to, to peek first. Right? There was no, no stun, no anything. Now, look, your teammates are going in, but you're not going in with them. Right? That's another thing. You should be next to the Breach and Reyna, right? To make sure that they are being, uh, they are being traded. Right now, Reyna went alone on site. This wall is probably not that much needed. That's also a thing. Ah, that's very important. That's very important for the Sage players everywhere on any rank to learn. And I see this shit on Immortal 3 as well. The way that you played this round changed it. I mean, sorry, the way you guys played the round as a team changed the way that you should play. Because your teammates were already on site, right? The, the, the thing, your, the, 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 the task of this wall over here is to make sure that your teammates can pass to this point without being spammed or spotted. So if your teammates are already on site, your wall doesn't really have that much of a function here. Right? So what do you... What do you oh, fuck me, Epic Pan. Epic Pan, fuck off. So what do you like to achieve? What do you like to achieve is because you smoked there already, you're like, your omen, your omen smoked canteen, right? So, there's a high chance that you can also just go onto site and use your wall differently because the job is already done. So, you're able to utilize your wall in a different way, right? You can cross to site and now do something different. You can wall of tower. You can do this to be more safe unless you want to take space there. If you don't want to wall off tower, you can maybe even wall off dice. Like this, right? To make sure that people will not be able to just push you from dice. You can also just wall off canteen, right? Like here. So you can also just hold arcade from here without being exposed to canteen and without being exposed to this point as well. So you can like jiggle a little bit. You can use your wall as well. For example, to do something stuff like this. And you just boost yourself up here. Like this. Because you don't have to do this wall. Right? You don't have to go for default walls if your wall will not do its function. Right? You can be a little bit more creative with them and not just go for the default things that you think are helping because it, the moment already passed. Sure, you can do this wall and it's not going to be bad, but it's, it can be better. You know? Like, a lot of that stuff is actually something that you might just want to practice, right? Even like doing stuff like this. Look, I go here and I do this. Not only I, I limit the amount of space that the opponents can take because they cannot go dice, I'm also in an off angle that I can take one gunfight, jump down into cover, right? Right? All because my teammates were already on site and I don't have to use this wall. Right? Now we're practice thinking about utility of which wall is more beneficial. It, the thing is, this wall that you're doing here, if you're not on site, it's probably more important. Right? But when you're already like the, the, the wall here is to make sure that your teammates can, can go onto site. If you're already on site, then this wall loses most of its function. Right? The same point here. If you're going onto site on A, you're doing this wall to make sure you can go onto site without being shot from CT and dish. If your teammates are already on site, well, then this wall kind of loses its function as well. Right? So you can be a little bit more creative with it. You can even do shit like this. Like, dude. No one thinks about this stuff. Right? Like, having off angles with, with, with Sage Walls is actually very, very, very fucking tough. Like, uh, for the opponents. Right? Maybe you can just plant here, right? And then be like... I don't know. Like, you can do also this. This is also very powerful, right? Just remember to for your for your teammates to smoke dish. Right? 
Because remember that when your wall doesn't doesn't function anymore because it loses the initial function that was fought for, you can be more creative with the stuff that you still have. Probably not. Uh, okay, that's so the. Uh, I, uh, the plant was like pro very important, but probably fighting still was more important. I'm not sure what happened with your teammates. I mean, it's, there's not much to say. They just lost gunfights, right? But also, the plant. Uh, I feel like that's that's a thing that uh, many people all many people also fall for is that. Everyone thinks that planting here is super beneficial when the reality is actually planting in this position is not that beneficial for you. Where the fuck am I? Um, wait, need to pause. So the thing is that planting in this corner over here is hugely beneficial if you play from tower. If you have tower control, then planting here is, is great. But if you're not have if you do not have tower control, then you cannot really benefit from this position. And when you plant here, you're like trapped. What do you do? You can't really do much. You have no leeway, like you have no no flexibility and you have no cover as well. So remember that what you guys do also is you do not you do not use the map's um, design because you go typically five players from B main or five players from A main. That means that you never have tower control unless you push it from the, the site because no one is going from the north side of the map, right? Maybe you should try more of like splitting. Like, three players coming from B-Main, two players coming from, from the north side. But the players from the north side should be slower than the players on the main. Because the players from the north side should be playing off the pressure that is being done on the side. Right? So when, But if you are all going from long, try not to plant here. Try to plant in the default spot over here, which has the same purpose as this spot here. Right? So the player has to stand here or here to defuse. Right? Or here, behind this box over here. The problem is, this can be spammed. You can get killed here with even ghosts, right? Planting here is easier, but then you can get killed from canteen. So someone needs to help you and cover you when you're planting for canteen. So when you're planting in this corner. But this corner allows you to play more freely. And then also, when, you're, when you planted the spike... Well, then you can just, you know, you, you can be a little bit more open to fighting. You are covered from one spot. You can reposition to dice. You can do, if you still have the wall, you can wall off yourself. Like, there's, there's so many options. If you're here, you're fucked. Because you have absolutely zero cover. And if you're being pushed, you're, you're dead. 100%. And no one can help you. Right? And also, very important, when you plant, and you're a sage, it's even more important. When you're finishing up planting, hold your crouch button for a moment in spaces where your opponents can see you above the cover. And Sage, unfortunately, has the hair. For example, on Breeze, when you plant at the, at the like, edge of the pyramid, when you're planting... I need to go for the spike so I can show you this, what I mean. Um, I have the spike. And the same goes for have, Heaven on Sea. When you're planting the spike, when you stop planting, you don't want to stand up immediately. What you want to do is you're going to hold your crouch button, you plant, and you stay crouched. Because people might get alerted on your position instantly, you just stand up by default. And for example, when there's a pyramid from Breeze, and it looks like this, you're going to pop out when you don't have your weapon ready. Right? So you're not give a, you're not you're not even gonna be able to fight because your weapon is not ready and you're gonna insta die because your character uncrouched. What you want to do is hold the crouch, plant, 
ready your weapon out, and then go. You know? Your Reyna this time went from dish. Killjoy or Omen would be more beneficial, but yeah. See? The reason you died is because you did the same wall that you did before, and that wall doesn't help you do anything on site. If you would have done the wall in front of you, you would be able to plant without being spotted by the Astra, but also... You should never go for the plant here because you didn't clear the site. Right? Go on the site, fight, clear the site, then plant. Never have the mindset of, I'm a sage, my only job is to plant. Be more about killing people first on site, then plant. You planting and dying doesn't help the team. There's someone drilling from my neighbors. That's what you hear. Can't really do anything about that. Ugh, that's rough. The biggest learning today is the mindset change. I never realized I was playing like a MOBA player, which I was. It's very visible. Also, why are you going to for the Spectre? No, no, no. Full buy, full buy, full buy, full buy. Full buy. Why are you going for this? Unless you like the Spectre more of Vandal, which is understandable if it's your first tech FPS and you feel more comfortable with it. But otherwise, there's absolutely no point in saving this. Like, all of you have cash for a full buy. And one person has even enough cash to drop you a gun in the next round if you lose. Time for a field test. So this buy here, I am not a fan. Also the small armor. I'm not a fan. I'm always scared to full buy when I don't have enough for the next round. Yeah, but the thing is, your teammates align. You have... Look, this guy has 1.6k, 1.8k, 3.2, 3.9. Why is this person not buying? He, he bought later, right? For sure. What you need to have for the next round, if you want to full buy, is... 3.3 or 3.7 in case of Sage, right? 3.7 is enough to buy a Vandal, small shields, and a wall. Slow orb is not that important. With 3.3, well, then you might not have a wall, but you still have a gun and a half shield to play full buy. But if your team is, like, you need to think about this round first, then the next one. And in this round... Everyone is playing full buy, so should you. Okay? And if you worry about the full buy, remember, if you have 3.3k, that still counts as a full buy. Time for a field test. The, the numbers you're looking at for a Sage is 3.3, 3.7, and 4.3 because 3.3 is the minimum that counts for a full buy with a vandal small shields and no util right 3.7 is vandal small shields and the wall 4.3 is full buy including the wall the slow orb in my mind is so not important in the grand scheme of things you only buy it when you have the cash for it. Go, 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 Reyna. Also, Reyna didn't buy full as well, which is 
in my eyes, also a mistake. Reyna should be going with you here and flashing and shit. And, well, and Kildra is going again first. Ugh! And don't shoot through this wall with a Spectre. It deals like five damage. Don't do this. Spectre has a low penetration bullets. When you go into your game, that's also something that mo most new players don't know. When you go into the game, you can read about the, the, the weapons. Look on the right side. Right? On the top of it, you have Vandal, Primary Fire, Auto, Medium. Medium says medium penetration. Right? Spectre has low penetration. Guardian has heavy penetration. Low penetration deals almost no damage going through the walls. So it's you essentially kind of baiting yourself because your opponent will know exactly where you're at. While you're not doing a lot of damage, he will just swing you and kill you. Right? See? The same example of what I explained before. Your mindset is... I do the same wall every round. Because you don't pay attention that your um, environment changed. Right? Also a very good learning moment. This plant in this corner, by the way, not Gucci. Your opponents can hide in the corner. Like, th this is very, very important one. If you plant in this corner here, right? Or like the way you plant it here, so it will be planted in this spot. Your opponent will be able to hug in this corner and buy time because you will be you will be pushed out to swing like this to kill that person. Look how much time I have to pass. How much space I have to pass and how much time it takes to kill that person that is in the corner hugging, right? If if you plant on this on this side, you have like three default spots. This one is probably the strongest plant in the corner, right? So you start planting, you can look whenever you want, wherever you want, but at the end of the plant, you look into the corner, so it goes exactly into the corner, right? Here, in this spot. The other plant is safe plant. When you're under fire and you need to plant, but you don't want to die, you plant here because you cannot get killed through this pillar. If you have, if you feel safer, but you not, don't feel full safe, you can plant behind the pillar here, because the opponents who will be defusing it can still be shot. So if you plant it over here in this spot, right? When someone is defusing it, you can still shoot through this corner here and try to kill that person. And right now, look, your teammates are all in A main. And you're the only player that is playing on side for the spike. Because of that as well, your job is very important. This is like higher level thinking. But it's also important that I explain this. When this spike is planted here, you're the only anchor on side that is defending the spike. Because your other players in main are kind of useless. When someone crosses on side... Exactly what I explained happens. Someone can be defusing in that corner and get half defused before even your players are reaching the site. So you standing in this corner is very important because you're able to play off, like you're the first contact in this case. And your teammates can peek of your contact. So I'll explain how, what, does mean, what does that mean. So plant is, plant is somewhere here. I'm standing here. My players are playing in, in main, right? And I'm standing in this corner, right here. So, when my teammates are standing in main, they want to ideally stand like this. Or a little bit hidden, or like this. So they don't expose themselves to a player that is standing in this spot, right? And then the player that goes into sight doesn't see anyone here, and he needs to clear this angle, goes into you, might kill you, shit happens, but the player from here is now gonna see the other player and just kill him, because the opponent is going into a crossfire, and your teammates are playing on your contact. So when you have contact, and that means that you see your opponent, the player might swing and just get a free kill here. 
But if you die first, while being the only player on site, then your teammates lose that sentinel, in not as a role, but as a player that is overseeing the safety of this entire area. And this is something that is true, Hammond, that Immortal 3 players don't fucking know. Every single motherfucker will do the same thing that you just did at Bronze 3. Oh, I'm, I'm a fight. So don't feel bad about not knowing this. See? Right now, you expose yourself to three players and there's no one, no one in your team that benefits from your death because they cannot trade you. Right now, the roles are reversed. Look at your Reyna and look at your position, right? So, let's go again into the game. You're standing here. You successfully repositioned from a better position, right? You are standing here. You know your opponents were going to come from this spot. Your Reyna is standing behind a Sage Wall like this. Fuck me, Epic Pen. Don't do this to me, Epic Pen. So, look. See this? See this Reyna here? So, the roles are now reversed. Your Reyna is the contact... And you are the reaction player. When your Reyna sees a player in this spot, that's the moment for you to swing and get a free kill. But if you die first, then your teammate Reyna has no use. It, it's the role reversal. You, your changing position from here to here made you the reaction player and the players from main the contact player. Right? One, two, one, two. The order of who peaks. Or, or um, I mean, only the second player peaks. Player first, player player one never peaks, just holds an angle. Right? Your vote reviews are so much more detailed than other full coaching packages. I'll be honest with you, I have never seen anyone do any coaching on streams. So I have no clue what other people are doing. But if... If... if oh. <laughs> nah, nah, no, fuck it. I'll leave it to myself. Yo, Reyna really loves lurking. You guys need to put your hair in place. Ah, everyone goes well alone. You, you see this? Like, Breach is alone without anyone to trade him. But this is the mindset of that. We, I, I, I'm certain that you were just like, I'm gonna heal him. And now, look at this. Your Killjoy went alone onto site. No support. Right? You guys need to communicate as a five stack. Right? You, you need to communicate about, like, how you guys, guys go here. Because you have so much utility to go with. You have full utility from Breach. You have two blinds from Reyna. And you have a Paranoia. And this killer goes... Wah! Leroy Jenkins dies. Like, that's the definition. If, if that player also played MOBA with you, like, if she played Dota with you, that's like the guy goes against a turret and just dies. You can tell him that. Or tell her that. You know, that is not the way you play the game. Put a leash on that fucking Killjoy. 
I like this. Uh, uh, but we should have used we should use flashes. We should have used blind from Reyna. We should have used the paranoia before doing that shit. But that TP is fine if you use the other shit first. Oi! Oi, caramba! Woohoo! Alright, this wall is really not good, right? Uh, it, it has it has more gaps. And I, I, it has more holes than a fucking Swiss cheese. Like, holy shit, right? But we talked about this a lot. See? See? Uh, you are a little bit late to the peak. But you did it. You played on contact. But then you are a little bit lost because you have no idea what's going on. Because your killjoy died first and you have no flank control. Right? But I like the reactionary peak of the Reyna. You, you were taking a little bit too much time. But you got it. Yeah, our, our killjoy is really weird. Like, our killjoy is really weird. This is a low buy round, right? You only have one full buy. You have potentially three low uh, uh, full buys and two low buys. You have 6.6k. If you buy everything, you have 4.5 for the next... 4.3 if you f buy the second, second heal as well. Which is a full buy. In this round, I actually wouldn't mind buying small shields. Because I want to build up a little bit more economy in case it goes to shit. Two rounds in a row. And this is a lower buy for our team. I would assume. Actually, it's a full buy. Never mind. I think everyone forced. Yeah, but, but the, the Killjoy definitely plays a character that doesn't fit the way the, that she plays. Like, she would benefit from playing, for example, Phoenix. You want to play? Let's play. She's not afraid of pushing into sight, but she's probably... Wait, Memeida, tell me, tell me, honestly, I don't know that person, so I don't really, like, you know, give a fuck, and you should not as well, because I never know who that is, right? Is that Killjoy angry that no one follows her in those situations? Is she, like, going, why are you guys not pushing? Not at all? Okay. <laughs> Good! Good job! But why the fuck is your killjoy again going first? And you traded, you got the res, nice job. But why the fuck is the Reyna, uh, the, the, the killjoy always first contact is beyond me? Like, really tell the killjoy that she should be playing a different character like this is the, like she would benefit from a character that is more self-efficient because she is she likes to go first like play something that that is either you know either has flashes or just ha a little bit more self-sufficient so this, this, the way you played here, like you were separated from the Reyna, you get, like, I, I don't think this was a mistake. You could have, I think there were two good plays here. You either go fully running, help the Reyna, get that kill on that one player, or, the, or, or you gamble that the Reyna gets the kill and you get a free kill most likely because the player from this A main should be pushing. I don't think there's a wrong play here. I think both were okay. One was a little bit more gambly, but also would allow you to get, um... If, if your Reyna gets a 50-50, then you're able to get like a 80-20 in your, in your advantage because the opponents will be focused on the gunfight from the Reyna. Uh, remember, you don't have to need, you don't need the wall in the hands all the time. You can still have your gun out here. You can just use it a little bit closer, right? You run, oh, this is a very big mistake. You don't know about the position of the other players. You don't know if the site is clear. You wall off only CT. This is the only thing that this wall achieves. It only blocks the CT angle. It doesn't block dish. It doesn't block here. It doesn't block here. It doesn't block here. It doesn't block here. If you would put the wall... If you would put the wall... Like here... Like we spoke before... You're able to block dish, CT... And then focus 
on those three, right? But then you proceed to go onto the site with your knife out, which is a bad habit in general, right? B don't go into unknown with a knife out. Always have your weapon out. Always have your weapon out. Always be ready here. Always be ready that a motherfucker just stands in this spot. And he's gonna go poop and kill you because you're running with a knife out. And you're not you're not you're never gonna be able to retaliate. Tell your Reyna when planting next to the sage wall, don't look in the direction of the sage wall because this spike destroys the wall as it overrides it. Okay. Again, the principles of who peeks first, right? We spoke about this a lot, so I don't think we need to explain it. Your Reyna ints, and now you're in a 1v2. It would have been so easy if your Reyna would just stay alive, right? So easy. Play the same exact principle that we had before. Reyna stands in here or in here, you peek off contact. You're number two. Reyna is number one. And that, if you guys would just stand like that, you had a very high chance of winning this round. Five, four. Yeah, this is a full buy. Only your breach has a weird buy, but this is definitely a full buy for the entire team. Aha, this is a good example. Look. You have 3.2 for the next round after your buy here. I would, I would say that in this round, I would probably go like this. One slow. One slow. So I have a full buy for the next round in case we lose and we want to force. Or small shields and two slows. I wouldn't fully buy myself. Because right now, if you fully lose... And you use also a lot of your utility, you're gonna be at 3.2, right? Uh, remember what I told you about. Uh, this is the MOBA mindset and uh, this is your Killjoy in thing. Peeking before the stun, peeking first as a Killjoy as well. So walling here is only wasted cash and only helps the defenders. You are not resing anyone. You're not making anyone safe. You're on a 3v5. So you need to get kills. If you want to win this, this round, you need to fight and win gunfights. Walling here is 100% a mistake. And again, you played like a, you played like a MOBA character. Your gun is more important right now than your wall. You can triple peek. You can go, you, Omen comes to you here, you stand here, Breach stands here, and you guys go, uh, fuck, I don't know numbers in, in, in French. Three, two, one. You all three peek at the same time. You will probably have the, there's a high chance, if only one player holds this, you're gonna kill him. Un, dos, tres. Un, dos, tres. Yeah. So you want to like maximize the amount of players that are picking the same angle because then even with weaker guns, you can kill someone. You not picking with them here is essentially baiting them. And the wall right now allows the players from the defense to over-rotate because if they, they actually destroyed it, which is stupid as fuck. If they would leave this wall up, that is three trap for 35 seconds.
Imagine if you, imagine if you would have your wall to use your wall to wall this off like you typically do without exposing yourself and then you then you can go for free onto site because maybe no one heard this wall and you're not triggering the trap. Right? To block its vision. We go for the default bad plant that doesn't give you anything, right? We talked about this already. There's one guy on long B. You should probably go for three, two, one. Ah, you you heard that person, by the way. You heard that person. So maybe there were too much comms, too many comms, and you didn't hear that. But I definitely heard it right here. So if you would be aware of the player from B long, the proper play was to communicate with the omen. There's one guy on long B. Let's go double peek. Three, two, one, and we go. Just like we did on long with the three players, right? Like uh, like we should have done done on long. The same principle, right? So now we have a very weird buy. So you guys, you go for a half buy. And other players full buy. Killjoy forces. Ugh. How much cash you had? had? 3.7. So, see? Perfect example. In this case, you go barrier or small shields vandal. Because your team your teammates are forcing. Dridas on Killjoy is fully spending his credits. Everyone else goes go, goes for a vandal. You need to align with your team. And you have the cash to do that. You can go for a Vandal, Light Shields, and a Wall. I never buy a small shield Vandal, I don't know why. But you go for a Spectre small shields, which is even weirder. So, you know. Going here for a Vandal, small shield, Wall is definitely the choice. Breakthrough. <laughs> yeah, be people should be peeking after that. That's done. <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting Vandal because I know I will lose my duels. So probably not a good mindset. I mean, Mameda, you know, I'm telling you all the time. Exclamation mark duels. Practice that. Practice that slowly and surely. You you have good control on your trigger. So you're gonna benefit from having a vandal. Just you need to work up that confidence on, on getting the duels. Your Reina should be fucking pushing that, by the way. No, no, no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Everyone is just going in. Oh shit. I mean, you guys seem to be, as a five stack, you guys don't see, seem to be aligned on the way you want to play. You either wait out this ultimate or you go all in. But here, Breach goes alone, doesn't give a fuck, and everyone is like still like somewhere else. We always config on how to play. Yeah, I can definitely see this. I can definitely see this. I didn't see a single Kildra anti-flank, by the way. <laughs> it's funny as fuck. Good thing that you bought yourself a pistol, I like that. Your train from Icebox arrive and pick up. Was the half shield hit? Hmm? Doesn't matter, this is the last round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys are. See, see, see this? 
You're baiting your omen right here. You should be with him. You should be fighting. You are six out of eight. If you get one kill, there are four orbs on this map. You can easily go for a res as well. If you just get one trade, right? Where is it planted? It's planted in the corner. But you have this time tower control. You hear the player from Jenny. You could have taken a time. You, you could have... Shit, my bad. You could have taken a little bit of time because they didn't know about your position. All right, walling like this doesn't give you much. All right. You could have totally walled it off. I know it's, it's like a high pressure situation. It, this funnels your opponents into this one position, which is also nice, but then you're not helping on site, right? So you have to, like, the opponents have a majority of players. So if the Neon is actually smart, she's never going to pick you, just going to bait you, so you can never rotate, and the other three players are going to just push the Omen and kill him. What you could have done, though, right, is when you have the time, you do this, and then you quickly go into tower, hopefully not die, and then those players from over here will have to destroy the tower, uh, sorry, have to destroy the wall before going into tower, which gives you enough time to be aggressive here with the omen. Right? Uh, remember, if you're in a situation like this, 2v3, right? Actually, it was 2v5, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 2v5. If you want wins. Like, this is very, 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 very fucking un unlikely to win. But in general, when you have like a 2v3, 2v4, situations like that, you want to be the aggressor. <laughs> okay then! Sometimes lucky. Good job. <laughs> Contact play from Omen! Contact play from Omen! You can just sit in the tower, be fully safe, right? Good job. All right. That concludes our session. I hope you learned. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for sending the VOD and 30 euros. I, I think you, you, sh you, had, you had a lot of opportunities to learn something from this.